Hi YouTube, uh, today we're going to take a look at this control linkage setup I have for our one meter DLG. And as you can see, um, the floor servos are mounted onto a carbon fiber tray. And uh, I've got control uh, carbon fiber tubing for the control arms leading back to the flaps. and. The servos are basically just set inside that carbon fiber tray. They're hot glued on, and let's get to it. Um, I think that last time I didn't even show you uh, the mounting of the tail group onto the wing. So here I'm just epoxying it on the 3D printed uh, wing mounts I have, and. After I got it set up to the proper length from the rudder and everything else, I just let it sit uh, somewhere and make sure everything is straight, plumb, and level. And now on to the uh, closer look at the servo tray here. So as you can see, I've got this collar that's uh, I epoxied into the center that it slides onto the boom just like that. It's nice because I can dry fit everything like this. And uh, now on to, well, there's my boss. She's got to come over to make sure everything's okie dokie. Hey, girly. <laughs> so the next thing we have to do is cut out the holes in the servo tray. And this servo tray is made out of carbon fire plate. I'll leave a link in, up above if you don't know how to do that, but uh, it's pretty basic. Next, we're gonna take a look at the ring that we put around the fuse. And it's about 20 millimeters wide, but it's got holes in it for the string and the carbon rods that go through. And now, speaking of carbon rods, this is one of them. Uh, it's pretty basic, easy to make. All you have to do is take one millimeter stainless wire like this, put a Z-band at the end of it, and file it with, a, just rough it up. Okay, just so the glue's got a better bond. Now I'm gonna give it a wash in uh, some thin CA here, and we'll just stick it right inside that tube. And remarkably, one millimeter stainless wire fits perfectly into two millimeter carbon fiber tube. And there you go, just let it, that's it. And for those of you who don't know how to make a nice tight Z band, I'll show you how what how I how I do it. Uh, this was shown to me a long time ago. I forget where, but I've been doing it this way ever since. So first, you got to do is uh, get a 90 on it, and then you just hold it with another pair of pliers. And you need a block like this, which says A Monos on it. <laughs> no, you don't. Just push that in. Give it a couple love taps. Square it up. And there you go, and it's done. See, beautiful. Wait a minute, that's no good. You're right. So I'll just grab it with my pliers and we're just gonna give this thing a little twist. And after you've done that, it's perfect. See, nice. So moving on, we have our control arms attached to the servos on on the servo plate here and it's stuck through that ring there everything's dry fit right now but what we want to determine is location of the slot for the uh, aileron horns and mine happened to be five millimeters inboard of that of that cut on the flap okay so make sure there's nothing binding at this point. That's why we dry fit everything, okay? And if you want to have to, have to enlarge any holes on that ring, do it now. Okay, so now we're just gonna cut those slots now that we just uh, measured. And the best way to, I found that just a sharp exacto. Take your time with it. It's gonna be tough, but just get through it. And after you've got the slots cut out you want to make sure that they're clean of any debris like excess foam bits 
that are in there that's gonna impede the uh, the epoxy bond to it okay so next we're just gonna mix up some uh, epoxy here I like using the uh, the 15 minute stuff because I think it just gives me more time to work with it and we're just gonna put in our horns into those slots just like that and there's just a couple things to note here make sure the hole in the horn is directly above the hinge line and everything's nice and square and straight just like that okay so our next step is just going to be to glue on that uh, that fuse ring that we made and it just slides right on we don't need it dry fit anymore so we can just go put it right on you can mount the wing to align this ring too so after that's dry we just uh, epoxy uh, put some epoxy on the boom and that's going to accept that uh, servo tray that we made now note here that the servos for the ailerons are both at maximum uh, position uh, back okay that's important to note that because oh here's the other end of the carbon fiber rod it's basically just a 90 with a keeper wire on it more on that a little bit later um, I'm just marking off the excess carbon uh, I, from the horn to the end I give myself about 20 millimeters and now it's a good time or the only time you can put that heat shrink tubing on top of the uh, the carbon tubes and now with some slow set see a slow set because you need time to fiddle with this thing <laughs> and it it's really tough to get it in and if you're using quick set ca forget about it it'll it'll bomb before you even get it on and another thing to note here that uh, i've got that popsicle stick stuck on on the ailerons right so that gives me eight millimeter deflection up okay so that's going to be max travel for that aileron horn and here's another look underneath i've mounted that keeper wire on there inside that heat shrink tubing and the only thing i have to do now is just kind of heat it uh, without melting the wing <laughs> so there you go and now on to the tail section so i've got our string i fished it through the front of this pylon for the stab and I put it placed it through the horn and back through the front of the pylon which basically gives us a large loop for this string which isn't string at all really uh, what it is it's stainless steel braided wire it's very very thin 0.3 millimeters but super strong and while you're buying that you might as well get some of these sleeves too um okay so here we go i got the sleeve on between those uh those wires that come off note that i've got the the travel at the farthest extension so i don't bind anything now onto the uh the rudder it's at here's a close-up of the of the loop of the wire and it's pretty basic but what's not too basic is this little z clip that i use and what this gives me the ability to do is i can remove the uh the the rudder string without uh removing it off the servo basically it just makes life easier i can't put this on the uh, stack because there's no room so we just put that on like that and then we just uh kind of line everything up just like that now the only thing to do now is to mount those uh lines to the servos now here uh, you see that the rudder is i've got it clamped in a zero position and the servo tray here uh, sorry the servo for the rudder is in a neutral position uh, so you just pull the wire through that uh, 
through the collar and make sure it doesn't bind up with anything. So it's just going to go through that ring and then to the servo. And then once we get it where we want it, I just usually wrap it around the servo screw a couple times clockwise, same direction as the screw when it tightens and just tighten it up. And that'll hold it without any uh, anything else. Now for the uh, the horizontal stab, what we want to do is have our servo basically at the forward travel. And we're going to just prop it up 8 millimeters. So that's the travel of the up of the uh, elevator. And once we have that, all we got to do is the same thing as the other one. Uh, just wrap it around that screw and that'll just lock it in place so everything's good. So with that, that's a wrap. And uh, the next video, we'll just finish things up. And till then, don't forget, like, sub, comment, peace.